great movie, fantastic movie, uh, one of the best movies I've ever seen is on Netflix. Boom! Move your elbow. Lose your elbow, dude. So, uh, this movie is called Private Life by Tamara Jenkins. And uh, it's on Netflix, stars Paul Giamatti and Katherine Hahn. And uh, they play a couple, uh, Richard and Rachel. They're in their 40s, they're very literary, they drink lots of fine wines, and uh, they make lots of uh, very uh, nice gourmet foods. They know how to use salt and fat, and uh, they know how to uh, go to the most hipster burrito uh, taco stands uh, in Manhattan. They live in Manhattan. And they've made it, man. I mean, they're published writers. They get their plays performed. You've really made it when you, when you have your plays performed. They're in their 40s, but uh, there's one thing missing in their life. Uh, they don't have a kid. They want kids so bad. And uh, they go through relentless fertility treatments that cost over $100,000. And... Uh, it's horrible, and we all know people who've gone through fertility treatments. You know, my wife and I, we didn't go through treatments per se, but man, it took us two years. There was just a, uh, a fatigue about trying to have kids when it's not happening uh, quickly. Uh, you know, doubt and fatigue set in. This movie takes that doubt and fatigue and puts it on steroids. It takes this couple. Kath, uh, Catherine uh, Hahn plays a, an amazing uh, Rachel. Her misery is so transparent. No one's better than Paul Giamatti, is Richard. And what happens is this couple hates each other more and more and more as they go through the fertility treatments. He feels emasculated and in fact the movie underscores his emasculation by explicitly saying that you know he only has one testicle. And then at one point in the movie uh, you know, Rachel, her eggs are no longer viable. She's questioning her womanhood. And then, when they have to pick a, uh, a woman with eggs, and they're looking at, or, or a surrogate, and they're looking at um, photographs of young wo women, you know, Rachel, she feels threatened. And this couple becomes more and more joyless. More and more joyless. More and more bickering. Uh, the anger and the rage they have for one another. And it's so funny. You know, the, the, uh, the actors never turn their characters into cartoons or caricatures. They're complex, they're believable, they're funny. Great movie. The thing that I find fascinating about the movie, the major question that I came away with it is, uh, the movie never explicitly uh, gave us a motive as to why this 40-something literary couple wants children. We're left to figure it out on our own. Here's my theory. Here's my theory. When you have achieved material success in life, uh, when you uh, have achieved, quote, the American dream, you want yourself and the world to believe you figured it all out. You figured it all out. But what happens, and it happens to this couple in this movie, is you don't have things figured out. You're, you're unhappy, you're miserable, uh, you're empty. Victor Frankl calls it the existential vacuum. We could just call it boredom. Or if you're French, we could call it ennui. And to stare into the emptiness of your life is just too miserable. It's a 10 on the, on the misery scale. Knowing that you've, you've done all this hard work, uh, have achieved all these things, and you, and you have an income coming in, and to still be empty and to still be miserable, that's too much to bear. And so I think what's happening in this movie, and, and what makes this movie so amazing, is because this is universal, is that people will go on a fool's errand, because a fool's errand will provide them with a distraction from the life that, in spite of all the material success, is, is really just an empty joke. It's a farce. And people would rather be miserable with these fertility treatments. And I mean they are miserable. They become addicted to these misery inducing treatments to the point that in one point in the film they're referred to as fertility junkies. But you see the misery of going through this fertility stuff is probably an 8.5 compared uh, it's a 10-0 on its own but compared to the misery of realizing their life is an empty joke that is a 10, and I think people would rather be uh, 
8.5 miserable than 10.0. Horrible, horrible dark truth in Tamara Jenkins' movie. Uh, it reminds me of a, of a topic I do in my, uh, my English composition class on uh, bariatric surgery. It's a surgery where they, you know, a gastric bypass. It's just horrible. You suffer from malnutrition and you got to be cut apart and everything. We don't even know if it works. I mean, especially in the long term. I think half of the people work a long time, but I always tell my students, the people who get bariatric surgery, the misery that they have in their life as it is, is a 10. I mean, if you weigh 600 pounds and you can't even exercise, you probably need the surgery. I mean, you're, you're going to die. And so your, your misery is a 10. You'll go through the bariatric surgery and, and at least your 7.5 misery post-surgery is better than the 10-0 that you had before that. I kind of uh, make that as a parallel to uh, this couple. I mean, they, they, don't, they don't have it figured out. You, you want to figure things out. I'll give you an example. Uh, my wife, her younger cousin, a few years back, lived in San Francisco. She was going to Cal Berkeley. And she worked as a nanny. And she made a lot of money. She worked as a nanny for these power couples in their 40s with uh, newborn babies, twins. She made $130,000 a year under the table. And she was appalled at these these 40-something power couples because she said they don't want anything to do with their children. I mean, they don't see their children from 6 in the morning until 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. They get home. I'm holding the babies. And these parents ignore the babies. They, they open the refrigerator. They get out uh, some white wine. They're texting on their phones. They don't want, they, don't, they never wanted these children. And eventually she had to quit. And it's almost like um, having children is just another feather in the cap. You're just playing house. You're trying to convince yourself and the world that you made it, that you figured it all out. And you haven't. And so Tamara Jenkins in Private Life, she takes this theme and she presents it to us in a way that's painful, believable, funny. Paul Giamatti and Catherine Hahn do such a good job of it. I now, I now need to see uh, Tamara Jenkins' earlier film. I think it's called The Slum, Slums of Beverly Hills. I need to see it. So, uh, hope you can uh, see uh, Private Life on Netflix. Gosh, I love Paul Giamatti. Now, I'm so in love with his performance. I need to go back and uh, re-watch Sideways. I could, that's a sh movie I could watch over and over again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think of my theory. The theory of accepting misery 8.5 over 10.0. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I'm out.